Madam President, we're on the air. Microphone. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 44th annual meeting of the members of United Laguna Woods Mutual. That's a long tenure, folks, and we are very proud of it. We're a California nonprofit mutual benefit corporation, and today is Tuesday, October 8th, and we are in the boardroom of the community center. Uh, we have a quorum, all of us. Uh, so I will ask uh, Director Margolis to lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge, pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we start off with an approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion. Thank you. Uh, Carl and Sarah, second? I'll second. second. All right. All right, it's been moved and seconded that the agenda be approved. Uh, is there any uh, discussion? Uh, any disagreement? Adds to whatever. All right, uh, you can vote on your screen. Okay, just give me your verbal vote and I'll record it. Director Bastani, I need your vote. All right, just give Cheryl your. Yeah, I think it's without objection. Luckily, we're not going to have to use our voting screens very much this morning. Every, all our voting is going to be done by secret ballot. Uh, approval of the minutes, October 9th, 2018, which was our 43rd annual meeting a year ago. May I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. All right, let's try different people. How about cash and seconded by Raisa? Are there any objections, additions, corrections to the minutes? If not, they stand approved without, um, without objection. All right, I see we have our wonderful lady from the Globe here in the back, and of course our wonderful VTV people upstairs are recording this session. So I acknowledge our press. Now we get on to the fun this morning, uh, and that is the state of the mutual. And in conjunction with uh, Eileen Pollan and her group in communications, we've put together a slideshow of some of the things that has happened in United, uh, or to United, uh, over the last year, and we just want to brag a little. So uh, to <clears throat> start out, can we get the slides? We are a housing mutual, and therefore, one of our main goals is creating a safe and peaceful neighborhood for everyone to live in. While managing for the future, it's been 44 years, folks, and our responsibility <coughs> as a board of directors is to make sure that we go on for another 44 years. Uh, so protecting, enhancing the uh, pr property values is very important. Increasing our reserves to take care of any unusual things that come up and investing in infrastructure. And while we did say specifically reserves, we also have to mention our contingency fund, which is part of our reserves. And we've had two big hits on that this year, uh, only proving to us why it's so important for us to keep those strong. 
uh, all the rains that we had this spring, we discovered a lot of drainage issues that during the drought were not apparent, but we are now working very hard on. And the other thing that just has come up this last month, uh, and watching television last night, it's a big statewide or national issue, and that's insurance. Property insurance has gone through the roof. Um, the television last night was talking about how many homeowners were not able to get property insurance. Their property insurance policies were canceled. And so we've been working very hard for the last month to get insurance for Laguna Woods Village, and it's been expensive. So uh, that's another reason why we need to have strong reserves and contingency funds. Infrastructure is something that uh, was deferred for many, many years, and that's been one of our focuses, is in making sure that we invest in our infrastructure and make sure that all of our housing units are stable. And to that, a lot of it has to do with our maintenance and construction uh, projects. And I will turn it over to Carl Randazzo, our first vice president, who is also the chair of MNC. Carl? I gave him the phone number to call in. So I was waiting for him to call in. The conference is on. Okay. Tell him to read my email if you have him on the line. Thank you. All right, Jeff. Carl. Okay. So good morning, everyone. <clears throat> we, uh, these are highlights of what happened this year. Uh, actually, there's five pages. And if you go to the MNC committee, you'll get copies of this five pages which goes into a lot more detail than what we're going to present here on the projects that we're actually endeavoring through maintenance and construction. Uh, <clears throat> as part of our uh, prior to paint program, we're addressing dry rot, something that in the past uh, four or five years ago, okay, we didn't do. They just painted over things, okay, and they really didn't investigate dry rot. So dry rot obviously needs to get repaired before you paint over it because obviously it's not a good thing if you paint over dry rot. So we're, that's part of our, our prior to paint program. The prior to paint program is indicated there, okay, uh, also includes the dry rot repair. And, and nine out of 11 cul-de-sacs have been completed this year. And we have this 10-year program to do painting, which is the next item on this thing. Every 10 years, we reboot. We start out with house number one, whatever that might be, and then we go through a cycle of 10 years, and then 10 years later, we go back to, to uh, house number one. And uh, so as a result, this year, cul-de-sacs 80, 82, 90, 91, 94, and 95 have been completed in 2019. And that will continue prior to paint, dry rot repair, and then paint itself. Also, we're also in the middle of a waistline remediation program. This is a multi-year program uh, whereby many of our older waistlines are made, were made out of cast iron. And as a result of that, they had a tendency of deteriorating and rusting on the inside. So there were uh, many problems as far as getting the uh, pipes so that they wouldn't start leaking with pinholes appearing through them. So as a result of that, we started this waistline remediation whereby we coat the inside of the pipes with this resin. And I think some of the people on TV and, and here in the room may have already experienced this. It's, a, it's, it's not an easy process to get through, okay, as you can imagine, okay? But uh, it's a process and we're going to go do so many houses and so many uh, uh, buildings per year and right now, this year, we've 54 buildings have been completed in 2019 so far. So far. Uh, roofing, it says here, more than 200 roof leaks have been reported and repaired in 2019. However, in addition to that, there's a 15-year roofing inspection program, okay, where each roof is inspected every 15 years, and if there's problems, we repair that roof or replace that roof, depending on what we find. So there's an ongoing program there, too. So 
it's not like we're sitting on our laurels. We have an ongoing program to make sure we're being proactive about this particular thing. Ah, pushmatic panel replacements. There is about approximately 2,750 uh, manors that had these pushmatic panels that were installed back in the 60s. And uh, based on a number of different things, which I won't go into, we have a 10-year program to change these out to the G standards that are today that we use. And as of this year, 196 of the 275 manors, uh, which were uh, and contemplated to be uh, repaired this year, are done. And then next year, we have another program, which will go through another 275. So by the time you know it, 10 years has gone by, and 2,750 of these things will be completed. And why we don't do them all at the same time is because of the fact that we have priorities. We have other things we have to do. We only have so many dollars to spend, so we do it on an ongoing process basis and a plan. Moisture intrusion. Well, we talked about the fact that we do have some cast iron lines that uh, do have leaks every once in a while due to their age. And we also have other moisture intrusion events like leaking roofs, uh, various other things, water damage as a result of various other things. So uh, our moisture intrusion process uh, has been increased whereby we had a 28-day completion schedule before and we've got it down to 16.3 days, so a 42% improvement. We're always trying to increase our ability to get some of this work done. We learn from our mistakes like everybody does, and we continue on in this particular endeavor. So moisture intrusion is something else we've been addressing on an ongoing basis. General services? Yeah. OK. <clears throat> Uh, general services is something that we share with the rest of the village, with third particularly, it's mostly with the housing visuals. And one of the big things Sorry about that. Uh, general services is something we share, particularly with our sister uh, mutual third, uh, these types of services. And some of the things that we have seen this last year are uh, clarify the guidelines about recyclable materials. We have the bins and we've done a lot of uh, things to identify on the bins what goes in, what doesn't. It's still a problem. People like to dump at the bin sites anything they don't want anymore, which costs the village, which is you and I out of our assessments, more money. And uh, so we have really worked uh, on a program to make those things noticeable and bring it, brought it to the attention of residents and hopefully uh, get uh, better control of that. We've revised the bulky item pickup procedures, which is once a month. If you have big things, you can put them out and they will be picked up without putting them in a dumpster and contaminating what you shouldn't. So uh, that program is well under uh, instituted. Uh, we have garden clipping pickup for residents as well because people do have their own um, gardens in their patios or right up next to their buildings and they weren't sure what to do with the green waste that they had and so we have instituted that. Uh, we've made residents aware of the rollout cart services where applicable and educational programs rolling out in early winter 2019 of uh, how this will benefit the village and how all of residents can partake on that. Janitorial is another thing that we share. And what we have done is contracted for night custodial services in all of our GRF facilities. I know that's not United, but United members use them. And it was an inconvenience when they were being cleaned in the daytime all the time and when they were having meetings or trying to get around. So with night custodial services, that means that uh, there's less interruption to our use of these facilities. That's more efficiencies cost savings, and an aesthetically pleasing appearance. Seal coating uh, is uh, really MNC, but I'm just going to cover it briefly. 
Uh, in 2019, the seal coat program is now complete. We do that from late spring to early fall. And in 2019, 14 cul-de-sacs were seal coated. You can see the numbers there. And this top coat, this seal coat, means that our uh, streets and cul-de-sacs are kept in good condition. And then we have paving, which is similar but different. This program begins in mid-September and is scheduled to be completed the end of November. And this year's asphalt paving program includes cul-de-sacs 9, 10, and 14. And this is the actual uh, asphalt paving of the streets, not just a seal coat. All right, our next uh, big, -ish, big item in everything that we do is landscaping. And so I'd like to turn this over to Maggie Blackwell, who is the chair of our landscape committee. Okay, our irrigation systems are inefficient and they are divided, now divided up. Turf sprinklers are replaced with higher efficiency, low precipitation sprinkler heads and rotary heads. They're rotary heads so they move like this. They're not rain birds. So that's more specific, much better. <laughs> and uh, sprinkler heads, spacing is corrected at the same time. So our irrigation group is working hard. Uh, we save water with drought resistant plants. We plant space for about a five year maturity. So turf reduction areas are chosen due to difficulty of mowing excessive runoff of water, or poor turf or plant performance. If that happens, then we replace those with the next page, water efficient landscaping. And then we use the drip irrigation system, which is a much, much better conservation of water. We have also a new compost machine, finally, and we are again saving thousands of dollars by creating our own mulch. Mulch surrounds plants applied once yearly to hold water and to control weeds. A mulch day was held for residents this year and they could obtain mulch for personal garden areas and for their patio plants. This is the first year we've done that. We have a combination of drip irrigation and mulch areas which is a huge saving of water. We use these native and drought resistant plants. Some people find them unattractive and they're distressed, but it's much better for the organization. They're hardier and they require less trimming. We have two new ticket, oh, you're way ahead of me. Okay, we're, we have two new ticket crews and those will come out when a resident calls with a special need that can't be handled in the normal time. So then they come out with a ticket crew and they are to handle that task to the end. Uh, we have been using this year plant growth regulators. If plants grow too fast, they require a lot of trimming. And where that's most evident is around the edges of our turf. So they're spraying a little growth retardant. Doesn't kill it, just growth regulates it. Slows it down a little bit so it's much easier and we don't have to do so much edging. Used to have to do edging every week and that's just impossible now. So we don't do that. Um, streamlined landscape request forms process to clarify and expedite requests. But the most important thing you can put on your request and in your call is your manor number. I cannot tell you how many we get without a manor number. And that requires several times sometimes. Uh, Roundup is what we tested and got rid of. And we found the new Finale with Oroboost, it's a non-toxic combination, which was devised only this year, not last year, when Third gave up and then was overgrown with weeds. We continued with the Roundup until we found a substitute, and this is a substitute, only costs us $15,000 more a year. That is a phenomenal difference. 
Our tree trimming is now on a five-year species-based tree trimming. It's based on the arbor tro, which locates every tree of every type and every condition, and that's working well. The tree trimming is performed in United through 2019. During this year, they are thinning up to one quarter of the crowns of these trees where possible. So they're thinning them out so that they can withstand not being trimmed for five years. That's it for landscape. Oh, United, oh, recycled, yeah. going the recycled water. United over here in Gates 1 and so on. This side of El Troy is not ever going to get recycled water, at least not in my lifetime, because it is, it is almost impossible to get the water lines under El Toro Road. You can imagine all that goes up and down El Toro Road. So we have recycled water is uh, in gate five and elsewhere, but it, it won't come over to the gate one and two and three. Uh, we have irrigation modifications. As I said, we're continually working on the the individual sprinklers in the individual areas. And we have a new five-year capital improvement project to replace the whole control system, and that begins in 2020. It will provide remote capability to control the system and will increase water efficiency. What we have right now is working, but this will be better. Implementation of California Friendly Landscapes supports smart water use. Uh, the, our current moisture sensitive system goes on several times a night. So you have the sprinklers go on for a minute. Then an hour or so later, they'll come on another minute. And they might go two, three, or five minutes a night, depending on how dry the soil was. We do that so that the water has time to sink in and it minimizes any runoff, because runoff is totally wasted water. Okay, thank you. Great, I'll turn it back over to Carl to talk about EV charging stations. The, uh, <clears throat> we were able to get a grant uh, whereby we were given uh, three quarters uh, tremendous amount of money to put these new charges in the back here. And uh, so there's three new charge point CPE 250 level three fast chargers, and then one new dual port level two electric vehicle charger behind the community center, like I mentioned. And uh, as a result of this grant money, okay, this cost us a nominal amount of money compared to what it would have cost us. And uh, this is uh, we have two pricing schedules for this, one for the residents and one for non-residents. Since this had to be, uh, in order to get this grant money, we had to basically put it in a place where anybody could actually access it. But we do have two uh, types of uh, charging rates, one for residents and one for non-residents. So as a result of that, those are available now in the back of this building. Moving on, governance is an important part of what the board does. And some of the things that we have looked at this year is a revised caregiver policy. Uh, we were getting a lot of concerns that we had from both uh, residents and from families of residents on caregivers. And so we have uh, changed that policy a little bit. We've worked with security and social services and uh, all caregivers now have to wear a badge, and it needs to be worn at all times. It's a little bit different than the badge that you and I have, the, the card. And I think residents don't know, I want to make sure that you do, caregivers do not have access to all of our amenities unless they are accompanying the person that they are giving care to. We've updated our traffic policies and our access to uh, our, our traffic school, which is kind of unique for a, a community like this, but it deals mostly with things that you need to know driving around 
Laguna Woods Village. And uh, we try to make it easier for people who have violations and when they can and cannot go to, to traffic school. For major moving violations, traffic school is not going to do it. So they are given monetary fines. We've revised our smoking policy. We have a lot of residents who ask for uh, complete non-smoking buildings, et cetera. We do have that ability. We have, I think, three or four non-smoking buildings in the uh, United right now. And if you live in a building and your neighbors also want it to be a non-smoking building, there is a way to apply for that. And if resident services would help you to uh, walk through that. And it is uh, done indefinitely. It's not something that stops when you move out. So when you uh, <clears throat> sell your share, whoever moves in has to agree to the non-smoking building as well. We've revised our move in and move out hours. This is another thing that was causing problems. We have a lot of people who are still working. This is the wonderful demographic that we have of the people coming into the village. And so it was more convenient for them to move in, unpack, moving trucks, et cetera, uh, at night or on weekends. But that got to be a problem for those of us who live here. And for the residents that live here, they wanted some sort of control so that they weren't uh, continually having the noise and the traffic problems, et cetera. So we revised the move in and move out hours, uh, shortened them a little. You need to have your move in and uh, done by 8 o'clock at night. And no 2 o'clock in the morning movings in. This also helps us with our trash problem because what we were finding was the people who were dumping things into our dumpsters and our uh, uh, dumpster areas were usually in the middle of the night when they were cleaning out their apartment, their uh, relatives unit, whatever. And so limiting these hours has also made it uh, a little bit easier there. We also uh, endorsed and worked with revising the uniform real estate sign policy, which looks really nice. It's very, instead of having a little bit of everything all over the place uh, with balloons and flags and streamers and whatever, uh, it's all very professional now and has the same kind of sign. And one of the big things that uh, came out of that also was all of the real estate signs have to have the broker information on it. You don't just have signs that are set up for anyone. To get back to the caregiver policy, uh, we clarified the activities of daily living. So why do you need a caregiver? What do they do? Uh, is it um, for everyday Activities that somebody has to do or is and going to the store for them or uh, setting up meals for them or is it actual medical necessities giving them medications and uh, those kinds of things. We removed the physician certification requirement because we found it really wasn't helping. The physicians were signing anything you put in front of them. We revised the definition of the family caregiver <coughs> as opposed to somebody that was hired. We exempted home care organizations and agencies. And this, because they did all their own background checks and did a lot of the things that we do for other caregivers. <coughs> and we established a photo ID card to be worn in plain sight. Excuse me. Next we go to uh, agricultural, architectural, I always want to say agricultural, we're not agriculture. Architectural standards, and I'll turn this over to Cash Akrakar, who is the chair of that committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everybody. The whole objective under Brett Crane as the leader, uh, staff member, 
uh, is to improve the process and make it simpler so we can get uh, easy access uh, permits because every alteration, every change needs to be approved by not just by our village but by the city. So what we have done is we have standardized most of the items that we can standardize uh, so that there is no time wasted getting this through the committee, et cetera, et cetera. So we have updated standards including vinyl fencing, skylights, balcony and patio covers, and common areas uh, use. Uh, we have streamlined alteration process and clear uh, rules for contractors. So uh, there's a better control on the quality of work that takes place and there's uh, follow-up and uh, inspection at the end. Uh, that's for alteration committee. And then next one. Uh, I'm also a chair of the uh, member uh, compliance committee, hearing committee, as well as the uh, uh, this particular disciplinary hearings. Uh, what happens is when we have uh, members who uh, are at fault or have uh, created problems in the association. Uh, disturbed neighbors, whatever, they are brought up in front of a board on a one-on-one -on -one basis with them, and the uh, resolution is made. Uh, guilty parties are fined and reprimanded whenever necessary. What we need to do is to keep the village in better uh, shape and in peace with the neighbors. We do have occasional problems and that uh, are resolved here. But this is strictly a one-on-one -on -one closed session meeting. Uh, we, we have re-evaluated uh, co-occupancy policies. We reduced clutter, care provider, alteration standards, delinquent accounts, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of these uh, on a monthly basis, we take care of about at least a dozen, maybe 12, uh, 11, 10 to 18 cases. And the meetings last from nine till 12 for sure, and sometimes nine till four. And we are there. Thank you. Great security. Uh, do either of you want to speak on the expo? Yes. No. Uh, we uh, are very conscious uh, and our policy for uh, disaster preparedness laid out by Chief Boy has been excellent and followed by many of the adjacent cities and he was even awarded a special honor uh, in 2017 for that. Now, he has done an excellent job and he had organized last month an earthquake expo that gave us the even a demonstration of what happens in a 7.5 to 8 earthquake, how bad the earth moves. And a lot of people had pretty much uh, feel for what that was. And uh, I think the awareness has increased even more. What we need is to make sure that we have the other part, and I think I'm gonna talk about it later, but we need to get um, general uh, building captains and GNCs um, to make sure that the information in case of a disaster is transferred, transferred to the uh, emergency operation centers and resolved and help is provided as early as possible. But please remember, in case of an event of disaster, the first line of defense is yourself, your neighbors, and your good neighbor captain. So uh, we need more of those, and I'll be talking on that later. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> 
Was there something? I wasn't sure you were pulling my attention. All right. Uh, we have preparation and execution of an emergency storm plan, which came into effect very much this year because of all of the rain and storms that we had this spring. Uh, when there's a drought, we don't really notice this, but we have the plan, and the plan was implemented. Crews from maintenance and construction, carpentry, irrigation, trees, paving, all construction and services, security, as well as moisture intrusion and the roofing contractors all work together to work on any problems that we had resulting from the drenching rains that we had this spring. All right. <clears throat> we already did compliance on the other. We had two slides on yeah, this. This so. is a mistake. I would do. Yeah. The slide 35 got doubled. <clears throat> but in that place, maybe I can talk about our member um, uh, advisory committee, mm -hmm. which I'm also a chair. Uh, what this is, is when you have problems and you're, you want resolution and it hasn't happened for whatever reasons, uh, and we do have people working, but everybody makes mistakes and sometimes there are delays. So you can come and explain what your problem is and we try to sell, uh, resolve it for you. And we also have a staff member present, so there's a pretty good follow-up on it. Uh, we, on a <coughs> in regular basis, once a month, meet and uh, address these problems and uh, come to resolution. So if you have any problems, my email was given already to everybody. You can call me or attend the meeting, and we will make sure we at least give you 100% of our attention. And it's not that you need then three minutes to talk about your problem. You have the whole floor. And meetings start at 4 and sometimes go past 5 o'clock to 5.30. But that's what we are there for. You know, we need to make sure everyone is safe and happy and proud to be Laguna Woods Villagian. Thanks. We have a lot of new people who come into the village, and we're a complicated village. There is so much. Of course, I refer all of you to our website. If you take a little time and go through our website, you're going to find just about anything you want or need. But a lot of times, our new members don't understand that and don't know where to go. And there again, that's where the resident advisory committee comes in. They come in and say, I've got this problem, and I don't know where to go. I don't know who to look to. I don't know what department handles it, et cetera. And so that's another just advisory thing that we can do And that it's not just uh, a concerns and problems, but when you're looking for advice on how to work. So that works very well. This year, we <clears throat> improved our gate system access. Uh, and in United, we had gates 1, 2, 3, and 4 completed in 2019. Uh, third also had a number of theirs, and I think this must be a third gatehouse. It doesn't look like one of ours. So we have safer increased uh, efficiencies at each of our gatehouses, and we found that from a security standpoint, this has been really, really helpful. Another uh, security thing that we are working on, and I know people think we're not working fast enough, but it's a very expensive project, and that's our Shepherd's Crook fencing. As of August, 3,475 linear feet of Shepherd's Crook has been installed. When the village was first encircled with our wall and they put barbed wire on the top, number one, the walls have receded, the dirt has come up on either side of it, and the barbed wire has deteriorated and we no longer can use barbed wire. And so that's why we're using this shepherd crook. Um, installation of 1,475 linear feet began in June, completed in November. Locations are selected by security in priority order based on security risks. And I know a lot of people have said, no, mine is the most important. I have the biggest security risk, and so we've had to uh, lean on our security department to make those decisions. 
When it's complete over the next few years, 33,525 linear feet of perimeter wall will be fitted with shepherd's crooks. Another thing I'd like to brag about is our social services. Social services <clears throat> conducted 1,258 office visits to address residents' needs from January to August of this year. We have a lot of people in our age group who have specific needs, and social services is the place that can help them. We've created a Balancing Act fall prevention class, falls being the biggest problem that most uh, seniors have. We expanded the social services department with collaboration with Medicare uh, Memorial Care, the hospital, Saddleback Hospital, the Council on Aging, and Alzheimer's Orange County. And in 2019-2020, in cooperation with Cal State Long Beach uh, Master of Social Work, we received an intern who works with us, and we like being able to furnish that education for interns who are getting their degrees in that, and there's a lot to do. So uh, our social services department is unique. Very few CIDs, common interest developments, uh, or homeowners associations have their own social services department, but we do, and it's very, very active. And then the last one that uh, Cash was going to talk on was yeah, our good neighbor captains. I mentioned about good neighbor captains. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it really is not that much of work. What it is, is you become the leader in case of an emergency to take care of your residents to find out who is hurt, what happened in your area, is the building down, is somebody having a heart attack or somebody got really bad injury and report that up to the emergency operating center so that help can be provided quickly. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that is the one half of the program, uh, plan for disaster preparedness. The first half, we have done excellent but because of Chief Moy, and we got an excellent plan. But the second part is bringing from bottom up. You and I got to be the good neighbor captains. What it does is it makes you friends with your neighborhood. You get to know who your neighbors are. Uh, you increase rapport with them. Uh, but we only have 193 volunteers so far. We need volunteers. The community was built with the ideas and thoughts and uh, vision of Mr. Kutisi a long time ago. But it survived because of volunteering. And volunteering is the key. You get not only brownie points with the guy in the sky, you, you feel good when, when you help somebody. And it's very important that we do. And we have only 193 of pe people who have signed in. The Good Neighbor Captain training and sessions are offered throughout the year, most of them in Clubhouse 7. So look for them. Uh, takes an hour or two of your time, that's it, to know what's going on. Uh, basic first aid training and CPR AED training classes, which are open to all residents in the village, are offered several times per year. So you know and you can be aware of what you can do, how you can help your neighbors, and uh, be proactive. Thank you. And you get a wonderful bright yellow vest to wear and a whistle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little, little extras there. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to turn it over now to Maggie, who is the head of our communications committee. And she's going to be talking about um, some of the marketing and communications uh, things that we have. OK, we have the new <coughs> resident orientation. And that's given by one director a month. And staff helps set it up. There is a, a guide to follow that the, that the director follows so that we don't forget anything. And we usually hear something from City Hall also. They come and give us a little 
discussion about what they do. These have been very successful. We have about 30 people every time. And some people catch up. They've moved in, you know, six months ago, but couldn't make it, and they catch up. And these are very helpful because with a small group, they can ask and answer questions easily and quickly. And we teach them how, see Becky is showing them how to get onto the website and what to do. So it's a very useful program. 68% uh, of the new residents in United attended a new resident orientation. That's up a whole lot from when I moved in 15 years ago. Orientations alternate between morning and evenings for resident convenience. So sometimes it's a morning and sometimes it's in the evening. The docent tour program has been spiffied up and we have some very good docents. In fact, one of our VMS representatives was a docent and so she's infamous throughout the village. And that's, that's a very fun ride for people who are new to the village or prospective residents. Um, or past residents, regular residents don't usually ride on that. Sometimes they, they get into side conversations and, and divert people's attention and so on. So you have to re receive an okay if you're, a, if you're a resident, permanent resident here. You have to receive an okay. So you need to sign up for that and get the okay for that. It's a really very successful thing and the, the hosts are really uplifting. Everything is good, and some of them have so much knowledge that the bus ride is not long enough for them to explain everything they know. So that's a very good fun thing. What, 109? 709 took that turn. Oh, that's good. Oh, yes, <laughs> 709 prospective buyers, new residents, and real estate agents toured through the village. Now, it's good for real estate agents to go to. Okay, professionally branded communications. These we did not have when I moved in 15 years ago or even 10 years ago or even eight years ago. But we've got a lot more communication going on now and you're getting it. You're getting it on your emails. You're getting it on all of these things. We tell you about everything that's going on. There are a couple of emails usually every week, especially one on Friday, and you get emergency emails all the time. The Village Breeze is now emailed monthly to 12,000 people plus staff. It's printed and distributed throughout the village. It's written by members of each board and it's edited by my committee, which was the Media and Communications Committee for United. Uh, the directors write the articles and we edit and put them together and staff makes sure that there are no mistakes in there anywhere. It's a very good thing. It's been running for, I'd say, four years, maybe four years. Really three years and about two months. <laughs> and it's getting more and more popular. And Elsie Addington is also my co-chair on this. And she does a lot of the writing now. She's got a funny sense of humor, and, <laughs> and she's writing about trash all the time. And that's, unfortunately, trash talk is very necessary in the village. <laughs> we have the weekly e-blast, and that's what you get, which tells you anything that's up in the village and tries to get you out of the house and, and into some kind of theater chair or dance room or something like that. So read your e-blast. They have a nice little, you can now click on things and go further so you don't have to read through a whole lot unless you want to. And that's a very good system. We have an emergency notification system that's code red. If something happens or something, there are sirens everywhere and everything and everybody says, what's going on? Or you smell smoke. 
you know, what is it? And this guy gets in, and people are worried. Then we send out a code red thing to let you know what is going on. And that's really part of the disaster committee and security, and it's a very good system. Uh, we've had several instances in the last couple of years where it has advised people that they could go to a clubhouse for safety and or supplies or water or whatever, and that's very good here. They, they use it in times of the heat, too, so if it gets really, really hot and you don't have the AC going, then you can go to a clubhouse. They'll let you know which one you can go to. Then we have the United Mutual Directors on TV, and we see one right here. Looks very familiar, wearing her usual color. So that's how we know she's president, right? It's a royal purple. Okay, so we all appear on this. If you're head of a committee, you appear on this, and you get to chat for a while with Ken and try to explain to people what's going on. And that's, that's popular, too. And they go out years back now about three years back for that one, so you can see what we all looked like a couple of years ago. On, you, on YouTube. On you, it's also on YouTube, which is when I watch it, because I'm Chief. not on time, yes. May I introduce? Director Ackercar? Yeah, at the end of that, you have finance, and before that, I would like to give a good news to the audience. Uh, I'm talking about handyman program coming to a conclusion. Oh pretty soon, and there will be a handyman program most likely introduced. The board has agreed upon a couple of things that we need to finalize so everybody gets assistance in changing their light bulbs and flipping their mattresses, doing little chores, all kinds of things. And um, also um, to assist with other problems, there's going to be very little, if any, charges to the uh, members. And uh, we will be unrolling this program out starting January. Uh, before that, I do intend to create a small, uh, somewhat like a pilot. And uh, I'll be sending out some emails uh, to do this so that we have some people uh, volunteered come up and offer us their homes and to take care of their chores and see how this new company will assist. If that company's assistance is adequate, then we will have the program. Okay? Thank you. And this that's was why just finalized last Friday, which yes. is why it didn't get into okay. our slideshow. <laughs> So it came right at communication. It was an instant ad. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, now we're going to look at finance. And in that case, we look at our uh, treasurer, Harry Morrison. Thank you. Our 2020 business plan shows that for the mutual, our 2019 budget was 375.69. Our 2020 budget was 396.38 with a change of $20.69. Basically, this increase was due to hiring more people because we were having a lot of complaints that people didn't feel that the job was getting done at their residence. So we felt that we needed to expend the dollars to hire more people to take care of the job. Also, infrastructure, we have uh, an infrastructure that has not been taken care of for 50 years. And um, our wasteland remediation being one of them, um, which we poured a lot of money into because it was costing us a lot of money when the water wastelines were backing up and flooding the residents. So uh, that's what a, a lot of that change was about. GRF went from 202 83 to 205.60, or a $2.77 change. So in total, from our 2019 budget of 578.52, we went to 601.98, which is a change of $23.46. Next slide shows us our basic assessment history. From 2016, which was 557.17, didn't change in 2017. 
Um, 2018 went to 568.99, 2019 to 578.52, and now we're at 601.98. So it's up about 8% over five years. Our mutual assessment history um, has gone from $362.87 in 2016 to three ninety six thirty eight in 2020. So it's up about 9%. Our GRF assessment history has gone from 194.30 in 2016 to 205.60 in 2020. Um, so it's up about 6%. Our fund balances in 2010 25,832,547. As of 831, we were at are at 20 million six sixty seven oh thirty-three. Our key financial facts, our operating increases required for many variable costs such as wage adjustments, insurance premiums, and legal fees. The mutual offsets some of these costs by reducing contingencies. The board continues to ensure reserve funding is available for future needs. Contracted reserve study for 2020 reports improved funding levels. We, they actually uh, have come up saying that we are low and we need to increase our reserves. CPI continues to edge upward um, currently, the CPI is at 3%. Resale history. Um, as you can see um, in the blue, uh, this is 2019, and um, it's not a whole lot different than the previous year, and it's down from 2017, which is the story of Orange County. Closed sales, um, <clears throat> you can see that Laguna Woods closed sales are higher than those of Aliso Viejo. Um, therefore, I think that everything is running pretty much um, the way it does in in uh, the, the country. Okay, I also at this point want to say thank Elsie. She's been a great backup and a great co-chair. She's helped me a lot. And I want to thank you uh, and hope that the new board takes advantage of your accounting background and your knowledge that you've gained through being on this board. I want to thank staff and Jeff Beaumont for their professional help. We could not operate without all of you. Um, I want to thank the residents for their courtesy. They've always been very courteous to me, and I appreciate that. And I want to lastly say it's been a pleasure to have worked with the board and um, wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. So <clears throat> we're looking forward to our 45th year, enjoying the good life in United. And I want to, at this time, thank our outgoing directors uh, who are leaving the board for their hard work and dedication to United Mutual. And that's Maggie Blackwell. <laughs> and Gary Morrison. <clears throat> They've been part of a great team. Now I get to talk. <laughs> it's President's <laughs> remarks. Um, <clears throat> I want to first and foremost thank the Board of Directors uh, and working with them over the last couple of years as, as president, all of the things that I feel 
we have gotten done, although there are still a lot of things that we do need to get done, and I'm sure we're gonna continue on in that direction. But the Board of Directors is not just the only ones that work. We have member advisors who come forward with their expertise, their advice, from the community, just on, on single issues, not to be a board member, not to put in the long hours that a board member puts in, but to help on specific projects. And so for all of our uh, advisors on our various uh, committees and task forces, I'd like to really thank you. And those of you in the village who feel that you have skills that you can contribute uh, let us know because it, it, to quote, takes a village. I also want to start to uh, thank staff. Working with staff has been a pleasure this year. It uh, uh, has helped us to go forward. There have been a lot of changes that we've made of, of working with staff, and I think it goes much smoother. We've tried not to be too intrusive on their work, and they have been very good about trying to support us in our work. And I would like to single out one of our, our directors who's been of special help, and that's Anthony Libatori, who is chair of the Roberts Rules Study Group and keeps us very much on track with our Roberts Rules of Order. And last but not least, I really need to thank our attorney, Jeff Beaumont, who is always there to help, who helps write things, who keeps us informed of what's going on up in Sacramento so that we know that what we're doing is correct and is always available to answer questions when uh, unusual things come up, as they do all the time. So thank you, Jeff. All right, we have already acknowledged the outgoing director, so I will introduce. Wait, Oops. may I be heard? Of course you may. Okay, being a director is thrilling and exciting. It's like playing tennis, basketball, and croquet at the same time. I know because I've done it. You walk into a room and something is there for United, and you do that, then the phone rings and it's someone, a resident or someone calling, which makes you put that down wherever you are, go into the other room and get something else. Then you get a text or an email and you have something else. So you have things located all over your house, little piles of things that then you must gather together and get in the right place so that you can get back to work. It is a nonstop, activity within the house, let alone within the village. So it's very exciting, and you need, you need to maintain a positive attitude, and you need to take it all in stride. It's, it's a great activity for anyone to do, and more people should take their time and take their turn and volunteer. Thank you very much. Okay, Gary, did you have any other comments? Nothing. Um, the other director with the expired term is Director Torn, but since he's also been reelected and will be coming back on, uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we go on? No. Okay, all right. Let's go to the next area, which is the introduction of the newly elected directors for three-year terms. Uh, and they are in our audience, so I'd, I'd ask them to stand when we call their name. And you'll be seeing more and more of them. Uh, the first one is Neda Ardani. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we have Brian Gilmore. And Andre Torn. So I would invite uh, our new, our two new directors to come forward right. and take seats up here. And we will now, oh goodness, John is so fair. He's got nameplates and everything for you. 
This does not mean secretary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Okay. Oh, you even get your director badge. Woo! <laughs> Keys to the kingdom here. Let's you up to the second floor. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're now going on to item number 12, which is the oath of office for all of the directors. And for that, I will turn it over to our attorney, Jeff Beaumont. Jeff? Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everybody. Uh, before I um, administer the um, oath of office that United has implemented. Um, I'd like to thank the directors for giving me the opportunity to work with uh, United and staff and each of you directors as well as the members. Um, it's an honor, it's a privilege. Um, I'm also grateful to work and, and uh, have the uh, opportunity to get to know uh, Maggie and Gary. It's been a pleasure and uh, what I can say with them departing, reflecting back on, on their service and reflecting back on the work that this board has done is uh, really unprecedented. It really is. Um, each director, I can look in everybody's eyes and say, um, had nothing but United's best interests in mind. Um, each director had their own vision and approach to how they thought business should be done. And through um, healthy discussion and dialogue, this board got a lot done. And I'm proud to be a part of that. I'm also uh, even more proud to uh, see what this next year has to bring us. Uh, before I proceed with administering the oath of office, I'd like to just quickly take advantage of my um, opportunity with the mic because as some of you may know, anytime an attorney gets a mic, they can't just uh, say the, the bare minimum. They have to capitalize on the opportunity and my opportunity is to try to educate um, as much as I can, not just the members that are here, but that are viewing at home on, on what my role is for the community. I think it's important that they, they understand when they see in the budget um, and financials um, line items for legal fees. That could be quite frustrating. Um, it could be um, sometimes met with resistance, but I can tell you with that comes value. The value I see in that, and this is somewhat self-serving, but I can tell you it's reality because it's fact. Your community with over 6,000 homes has less conflict in litigation than most of my clients with 30 homes. It's incredible. And it's not by chance, it's not by luck, it's by hard work through the staff, through the board, and really a partnership with the members and residents. Um, you have two active lawsuits in this community. Um, one is, is, is they both are being handled by insurance. Um, they, one of them is being overseen by me, but again is being handled by insurance. And the other is a small claims court case, which will soon be resolved. That, in a community of this size, is really something to um, be proud about. Um, my role is to make sure that the board and staff maintain compliance with governing documents, with current law, and how they operate, how they manage committees, how they manage each other, how they interact with staff. My job also is to assess risk and to help guide the board on how to manage that risk, to ensure that there's compliance throughout the community with the governing documents, which includes the bylaws, the occupancy agreement, the rules and regulations, board policies and procedures. Also, what, what is I think most impressive is the extent of your delinquencies. As, as you know, in a community like yours, you operate on a zero dollar budget. The money that comes in goes out towards expenses, either ongoing actual expenses or expenses that are being reserved for future expenditures. It's a zero dollar budget. Anytime one person 
either is unable or refuses to pay their monthly obligations through payment of assessments, that burden is shifted to all of you. And this board takes that very seriously and is, is very proactive in how they handle the collection of delinquent assessments. They've implemented a three-tier approach, which I find quite impressive. Um, they first start with staff, making sure that staff is reaching out and engaging members that may be in difficult times, um, trying to resolve the matter before it gets um, too unreasonable. And at that point, um, the board works with staff to shift those cases that can't be resolved over to an outside collection agency uh, that I interface with to make sure they're doing what the board's expectations are. And then lastly, if they still can't be resolved through that process, um, I get involved in making sure that those monies are collected um, for the betterment of United. The board, like I said, is very proactive, but also compassionate at the same time in collecting assessments and your receivables are very low for the size of your community. Um, with that, I'll go forward with the oath of office that I've been asked to administer. And I'd ask that each director, um, if you may, raise your right hand. And I'm going to ask you um, to say, I do, um, at the end of this uh, message. So by, by each of you as directors, now duly elected to the United Board, um, I'm gonna ask you um, to confirm the following at the end when I'm done. Each director, well, let me back up. Let me, let me kind of give an explanation of what the oath is. It's an official, you can put your hands down for now. You can see, it's, it's, like, it's like sitting in a dentist chair with your mouth open and you just wanna close it and you just can't. Um, it's an official promise by a person who's been elected to office to fulfill the duties of the office according to the organization's governing documents. And like I said, in United, those are the bylaws and the occupancy agreement, the rules and regulations, um, as well as current law. This means that by taking this oath, each of you as directors, by now raising your right hand, if you may, agree to the following. Each director agrees to act in the best interest of United and its members as a whole to act with care as a reasonable person would in a like position. This means among other things that each director will do the following, regularly attend board meetings, review board packets well in advance of meetings, review and consider information provided by staff or consultants or experts, engage in healthy dialogue and deliberations, make informed decisions, decisions that are based on information and not based on emotions or reactive thinking or personal opinions. To uphold and enforce the law in United's governing documents, which includes, like I mentioned earlier, the bylaws, the occupancy <coughs> agreement, articles of incorporation, rules and regulations, and the director's code of conduct. And lastly, to support the will of the board, the majority, even if you are a dissenting director, you disagree with the board's decision, which means you still have a voice, you can still express your position and opinion, but when the board makes a decision, you agree not to work against the board to undermine the board's decision as a whole. And lastly, by agreeing to this oath, each director will hold this oath while in office, and in doing so, will act with respect, with professionalism, courtesy, and with dignity. And with that, I ask each director, if you agree, to say, I do. I do. I do. Okay. Thank you very much. This is Director Armendariz. Can I be recognized? I'm sorry, can you repeat that, please? Uh, this is Director Armendariz. I'd like to be recognized so I can also say, I do. Yes, you may. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, we go on to um, number 13 on our agenda, and that is you all's turn. It's time for member comments. There can be three minutes per speaker, uh, and you are to speak on anything that's within the jurisdiction of this board of directors, and the board reserves the right to limit the total time allowed, but looking at the number of people in the audience, I don't think that will be a problem today. So I call on our corporate secretary to let us know who would like to speak. We have one request to speak from Sherry Horn.
for your indulgence and allowing me to speak. I speak today not as a resident, but as Thing I need to do. Okay, there it is. Okay, I speak today not as a resident, but as the vice president of the board of trustees for the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District. As you know, mosquitoes are a problem, not just here, all over the country. Because of climate change, many have come here from the Middle East, and we have these Aedes mosquitoes, Aedes aegypti. We have many, many different kinds of mosquitoes here. This is the Asian tiger mosquito, ankle biter. There's a lot of different things they call it. But it breed, all mosquitoes breed in something the size of a bottle cap, tiny little amount of water, indoor, outdoor. And our vector person that comes here all the time, the main source of these mosquitoes is our plant saucers. Yes, they're in electrical vaults and in our sewage and all this other stuff. But the main breeding of these mosquitoes is indoors and outdoors are these plants. I would ask every resident, look around your manor. Anything that can hold water, especially a plant saucer, if you overwater or if the sprinklers are filling it up, you should tip and toss those saucers. If water sits anywhere for three to five days, those mosquitoes are going to breed. They are here. They are breeding. What we don't have here right now is disease. This is, West Nile virus is a bird flu, okay? Birds fly all over the place. When mosquitoes bite them, they get West Nile virus. Then if they bite us, we get West Nile virus. For many years now, West Nile virus has been in the north part of the county. Every year, it moves further and further south. This is a very simple, low-tech thing to protect ourselves against. If we just tip out any standing water around our manor, we will cut down the amount of breeding. Unfortunately, many of us have plants that are too big to toss out. And our community pots around the clubhouses hold a ton of water in our breezeways and in everywhere. Those pots are too big for any resident to tip out the water. And water sits there because our landscapers come and water them, but then water sits in the bottom for a long time. And we are breeding mosquitoes. So this is a problem that we all have. It takes a village. We all have to be aware of it, and we all have to do something about it. And the simplest thing is to toss the water, whether it's into the landscaping, whether it's back into the plants, wherever you toss it, it's got to go. So please, let's all protect each other and ourselves, because that's all they need is an invitation, and they because they are here. We just don't want to get sick. So thank you all very much for your attention to this. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. It's a warning we all need to heed. All right. Uh, we have another request to speak from Steve Parsons. Good morning, President Steve. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> well, I want to say uh, uh, thanks to Gary and Maggie for serving in the past and uh, to the new people coming on the board. To a lot of people that are hearing this, I want you to know that the boards work on common things together. We don't chase off our own directions. Uh, we bounce things off each other. And like I say, anything common of nature, we try to do together. Uh, this also includes our council. Jeff, you've been so helpful to us. You've worked with Sandra, our council, and we really, really appreciate that. We appreciate the staff working with us too, especially on legal issues. So once again, thanks to staff as well. Uh, look forward to working with a new board and uh, suggestions, comments you have, we're willing to take them. So let us know. Thanks so much. Thank you, Steve. Okay, our next speaker is Susan Grinitz. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Thank you, Madam President, uh, for allowing me to address the community. I'm usually not very vocal about things, but um, I bought my unit in 2010. Um, 
but I just recently relocated here after I retired. Um, <clears throat> and I realized that um, since I've been living here that the, um, I live along Paseo de Valencia, which is quite noisy. And so I uh, downloaded a, <clears throat> a decibel meter on my iPad, and um, it, it registered about 60 to 80. So I started <laughs> wondering if anybody else had any problems with uh, decibel meters are not very good on iPads. I understand that. But when I started looking into it, I realized that this is pretty loud. And that was with the windows shut. Um, I do have new windows in my unit. Um, I called the city manager of Laguna Hills and because I know at one time there was a, um, uh, a move, there was some kind of, uh, they were going to try and widen the street. So um, that was tabled because uh, there was not enough money because they wanted a walkway on both sides of the street, and the citizens of Laguna Hills wanted also to have a uh, sound wall on both sides of the street, on their side as well as on our side. And that was tabled because there was not enough money in Laguna Hills, so they tabled that. So when I called our city manager here in Laguna Woods, he said that the wall was, um, I guess, the, the, the wall actually belongs to Laguna Woods. So my question to you <laughs> is, have you given any thought to doing something about improving the wall on our side of Paseo de Valencia? Because it is affecting my property value, number one, because my property value, the property that I bought was on the market for more than a year, maybe even longer, because of the, the noise. Um, number two, I have had to install a window. Uh, it's made by the company Indo uh, at a, an expense to myself uh, for soundproofing of that wind, those windows in my bedroom so I can sleep because I go to bed early. Um, so my, that, I don't expect you to answer my question today, but maybe for the board to address it, this at some point. I know you're putting spikes in these, and I've run over my time. You're putting spikes in these walls. If you're going to put spikes in the walls, maybe you can address the thickness and the size of the wall along Paseo de Valencia, because there are a lot of units there that property value is being affected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. We have a request to speak from um, Maxine McIntosh. Good morning, Maxine. Good morning, all of you, dear neighbors. Uh, I am just so happy to be at this meeting, not one of another board, where I can say I'm really proud of all the accomplishments over this last year. And that goes to the two people who've left, too. All of you, it's been a responsible, wonderful year. I base that on my many years of living here and of serving on different boards here. It's been terrific. I don't, I don't know of one major project where you've wasted money, not one. Wish I could say that about, well, anyhow, I can say that about this board. <laughs> Let me be positive here. When I think of the, we had the plumbing work done at our house on the sewer lines. That is such a job, as Carl said. That's a big job. And how fortunate we are that this board is pushing ahead with it. It's expensive, but it's saving our sewer lines instead of riveting up the cement in our homes to install a whole new one. That is just wonderful when we think of the, the bit of a bother having them come in and turn the water off and maybe a toilet overflows while they're working on it or something. That's nothing compared to riveting up the cement and replacing the whole line. So I'm just totally grateful, and I wish for you this next year the same level of success that your board has had in this past year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maxine. Are there any other member comments? No. No? Okay. Uh, how about uh, from our board? Are there any responses to the member comments? 
Yes, Carl. <clears throat> I live along Laguna Hills Drive. I know about noise. I knew that when I bought my manor that there was noise there. Uh, we have looked into the possibility of sound attenuation walls like they have along highways and stuff like that. And putting in those, uh, putting in the uh, shepherd's crooks, that's a nominal amount of money because they don't add to the cost of the foundations and then we'd have to increase the foundations and then make the walls a lot higher for sound attenuation purposes. Uh, that cost right now would be extremely cost prohibitive. Even, there are people along El Toro that are going to have the same issue, okay? Everybody that lives along those major thoroughfares, okay, has the same issue. And as I said, it's not only a matter of just increasing the height of the wall, then you'd have to increase the foundation of the wall because we're also in an earthquake zone. So as a result of that, the foundations are intense. So uh, yes, I, I definitely empathize with you because I live along Laguna Hills Drive, as I said. Uh, but at this particular point in time, we don't see it happening in the near future where we'd have enough money to do that type of work because it would happen along all of our perimeters, not only Paseo de Valencia, Laguna Hills Drive, El Toro, the whole thing. And there's a lot of people that hear that noise. And at this particular point in time, as I say, if we've looked into it preliminarily and found that the cost is extremely prohibitive because of the foundations and because of a whole host of other things. So I'm sorry to say, but we both will be living with the noise for a couple more years at least, unfortunately. Thank you. <clears throat> Director Akrakar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a couple of things. I would like to thank Sherry Horn to come in and make us aware that hey, we have to take care of ourselves and our neighbors and uh, mosquitoes is a problem. I would also like to congratulate Steve Parson for his new position and coming all the way and sitting through this couple hours uh, to thank us and to look forward to working together. Uh, what happens here doesn't just affect United, it also affects the rest of the village, and thank you very much for coming. And Susan, I think uh, you have a point, but let's see how and when we can get to that. Because we have approximately 3,000, 30,000 square foot wall that needs to be serviced. I don't know how much of that will be under you, because you're one of 60, 9,100 people living in the United. Uh, and Maxine, there's always, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you every day. You, you are the most positive person I've seen and dedicated person I've seen in the village. And thank you very much. <clears throat> Director Torn. Uh, thank you very much for uh, our city council, Sheer Horn provide us the information about uh, West Niles and Mosquito Province. Uh, and uh, we all need to be aware of that. Uh, thanks for the reminder. And as far as uh, Steve Parson, thank you very much for sharing information with us. And uh, we definitely, the board need to work together and uh, make sure that all the priorities are taken care of, making sure that the right things get done at the right time. And uh, as far as Susan's uh, comment about uh, um, the war, uh, it, I would assume that when you purchase the unit, you probably know that it's an adjacent to the street. And uh, we, we talked about that in the past. When I bought, purchased the unit, I purchased uh, something relatively quiet place. Uh, and that we paid premium on that. So hopefully uh, that's the way life is. And if we have to build up a wall, uh, strengthen the wall, it may co the cost is probably prohibitive for the whole community to take uh, over there. And I really appreciate Maxine's uh, comment. We'll do our best to satisfy all the residents' requirements. Thank you. Comments from any of the other directors? 
Okay, see. It's time to adjourn this part of the meeting. Uh, and I am going to do that and ask for a 10 minute recess so that at 10 after 11, we will reconvene with the organizational uh, part of our meeting. So this part of our meeting is adjourned. Of course. Uh, can we add a director's comment at the end of? Uh... Can we add a, a director's comment at the end of the before adjournment? Because that's usually the. No, it's not. Not for the organizational meeting. Not for the organization meeting. No. We okay. don't usually have. We had them at our previous meeting at the uh, that we just finished, but. Um, Organizational meeting is very uh, tight about just the specific things that we're supposed to do, excuse me, which is to elect officers. Okay. All right, so uh, are there any objections to the agenda? Seeing none. Where? Yes, Andre. He's objecting. Yeah, I'm objecting. I vote no for the All right. agenda. Okay, all right. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Manuel. I have a question. Yes. Uh, can we have uh, Jeff rule on that, whether or not we can add an item to the agenda, even though it's strictly primarily for the election of uh, officers? Can we ask him if we can add an item? Um, Jeff, do you have a comment on that? Uh, I do. Uh, this is an organizational meeting, which is called out for in the bylaws, which is specifically to elect the officers of the board. If, if there's an emergency, the board can call an emergency meeting under completely different circumstances uh, by a vote of uh, um, a uni unanimous vote of the board to call an emergency meeting to address any emergency items. But the organizational meeting is limited to just um, electing the officers of the board. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Sorry, it's mine, which should not be doing. It was turned off, I swear. <laughs> mm. 
Okay, try again. All right, uh, approval of the minutes of our organizational meeting of October 9th, 2018. Carol, uh, Carl, Andresa, are there any objections? Are there any votes against? All right, the minutes are adopted without objection. Okay. All right, we get into the election of the officers by operating <coughs> opening of nominations and votes. Uh, let me tell you how this is going to work. The chair will call for a nomination for a specific office. When that nomination is given, <clears throat> we do not need a second for nominations of officers. However, we do ask the person who has been nominated if they are willing to serve. Then um, the chair will ask for any other nominations. We will compete, continue to do that until there are no other nominations for that particular office, at which time we will close the nominations for that office and our wonderful corporate secretaries over there will hand out the closed ballots. Uh, how do you want to do it? Do you want to just put them over here or do you want to go around the back? What's more convenient? All right, so uh, fill out your ballot and hold it up and then we'll, we'll pick it up. Yes, Director Akrakar. Madam Chair, I was kind of wondering when you nominate somebody, do you have some chance to explain why you're nominating the person or no? No. Jeff? He's I think the best we're... person. It's the poison no. answer. No. Jeff, can they give a comment on why they're nominating that person? Typically, uh, that's not done. It's just a nomination process. Okay, so we want the name only. Correct. All right. If the board majority wants to change that procedure, it can. I, I don't recommend it because it really complicates the process. It, it extends it out. Um, mm -hmm. It could really lengthen the amount of time we're here. Um, but it's up to you. This is your meeting. It's, it's your um, procedure that you're going to implement. But typically, the nomination process is just the call of a, uh, for a nomination of somebody for a certain office. And then um, you ask for a second. Or you don't ask for a second. You ask if the person is willing and able to um, accept that nomination. And then you call for a vote by secret ballot. OK. Uh, technically, I'm not going to call for the vote because that takes two thirds here <laughs> to do. So all we will do is say we're ready to vote and there. So uh, the first office uh, that we will be filling is the office of president. Do I have a nomination for the office of president? Uh, Director Addington. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have the proud honor of nominating Juanita Skillman for the office of president of the United Mutual Board of Directors. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the honor. Uh, it has been my privilege to serve in this capacity for the past couple of years, but I think it's time to turn it over to somebody else, so I am going to respectfully decline. Do I have any other nominations for president? Andre? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to nominate uh, Sue Margolis as the chair of our next uh, 45th. Uh, uh, it's not the chair, it's the president. The president, okay. <laughs> yeah, of the United Board. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, are there any other nominations? Oh, I'm sorry. Sue, do you I am, accept? I would gratefully serve. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? All right, seeing none, uh, we only have one candidate. Therefore, I will declare that this office is filled by acclamation, and we do not have to go through the voting procedure. So congratulations, Sue. And 
I would be happy to turn over the gavel. Congratulations, Sue. I would like to now open the nominations for the first vice president. Are there any nominations? Andre? I would like to uh, nominate uh, Director Carl Randazzo. Carl, are you willing to serve? I'm, I'd be honored to serve as first vice president. Are there any other nominations for first vice president? Seeing that we are in, all in, unified here, we will welcome you as first vice president. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. I'd like to open the, yeah, let's. I'd like to open the nominations for second vice president. Madam Chair, this is Director Armendariz. I would like to nominate Andre Tong for second vice president. Thank you. Andre, are you willing to serve? Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, it will be my honor to serve if I'm elected. Is Elsie, would you like, who would you like to nominate? I'd like to nominate Cash Ashikar. Cash, are you willing to serve? It would be my honor to serve again. Thank you. Okay. Any other nominations? We'll need to take a ballot on this, please. Hello, Cheryl? Yes. Uh, I'd like to vote for Andre Torn. Thank you. Seeing as you know. <laughs> Talk through there. Manual? I mean, yeah, Manual? Yeah. I voted for Andre Cohen. I, I, I understand this is Jeff. Um, if you're not comfortable voting out loud because this is a secret ballot, uh, you can vote by either calling my cell phone and just tell me what your vote is through this process, or you can continue as is. It's up to you. But you have a right to vote by secret um, ballot. Uh, I, don't, I don't really care. I'll, I, I just want to make sure my vote gets acknowledged and heard. All right, as long, long as you understand, you have the option. Okay. Andre Tolling. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Manny.
Andre Torin got six votes. Cash got five votes. Congratulations, Andre. Thank you very much. It was, it's my honor. I now open the uh, nominations for board secretary. Carl? I'd like to uh, nominate Juanita Skillman for board secretary. Here. There are no seconds. I'd like to no nominate Juanita Skillman for board secretary. Are there any other nominations? Yes, I'd like to nominate Brian Gilmore. Okay. Brian, would you be willing to, oh, I forgot to ask you. Juanita, would you be willing to serve? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Brian, are you willing to serve? Uh, at this time, I'll decline. Okay, thank you. All right, having any other nominations at this point? We will declare Juanita as our new secretary. I now like to open the nominations for treasurer. Uh, Anthony, please. I'd like to nominate Elsie Addington. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Andre? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Manny Amadares. Elsie, would you Thank be willing you, to serve? Why, yes, I would. Yes, I Manny, would, would you, would you be, be willing, willing to serve? serve? Yes, I would be willing to serve. Thank you, Andre. Okay. We'll take a ballot on that. Any other nominations? We're still get, get collecting ballots, and then we will be counting them. And I believe we know who you voted for. <laughs> Thank you. Vote for me, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you, Manny, for voting for me. Six votes for Elsie and five. Oh, six votes for Elsie and five for Manny. I'd now like to announce the uh, executive officers. 
The president will be I, Sue Margolis. The first president will be Carl Rasmussen. The second vice president will be Andre Torin. The board secretary will be Juanita Skillman, and the treasurer will be Elsie um, Addington. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve the resolution for the election of the officers. Cash? A second. Okay. All, yes? I'd like to point out that on the resolution we have uh, four ex officio officers that are included in this resolution. We don't need to vote, but I just think everybody should know that they're on there. Okay. And that would be uh, the Vice President Sobin, Betty Parker as the Assistant Treasurer, and Cheryl as the Corporate Secretary. Okay, uh, let's vote. No, no, oh, no, no. I thought we entertained a motion to close the nominations. Uh, Madam President, we do need to vote on the resolution. Right. So we need to vote on the um, motion to approve the resolution for the officers. Can we have a voting screen? Can we have a raise of hands? I don't know if the voting screens are working. Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those against? Okay. Thank you. Director Armendariz, are you still on the line? Okay. I adjourn for food. <laughs> <laughs>